Sweden, renowned for neutrality. Didn't really do much in World War II. I'm sorry, Swedes. Don't be like, oh, the steel imports, uh, embargoes and helping the Finns out. You didn't do anything in World War II. What if Sweden did everything but the bad kind of everything? What if they sided with the bad guys? The Axis. Sweden joining the Axis, becoming a naval power and going fascist. Now, people of the future, you're probably thinking, oh, wait a second, that seems very unoriginal. I guarantee you everyone's going monarchist, okay? Everyone, everyone. This is probably the very first playthrough of fascist Sweden you've ever seen. And I can say that with some pretty good confidence. Anyway, without further ado, what if Sweden weren't fascist and joined the Axis? And oh, we don't actually have much choice. Oh, oh, oof. Let me think. What are all the different focuses we can select here? We have Defense Act and nothing else. Okay, well, I guess we're being defensive for now. One thing is going to be apparent. If we want to be a proper member of the Axis, we're going to need to have a decent Navy. Because let's be fair, aside from Italy's old fleet, the Axis Navy is pretty rubbish. Japan is not in the Axis. Japan is in the East Prosperity Sphere, whatever. I know you were going to say that. I knew that. I knew it. Mills. Definitely the impossible option for Sweden. And we suffer from a minus 25% penalty because it's amazing you can't build a military industrial complex if you have a big welfare state. You know what I'm going to say? Why can't we wave flags, support our troops, and also have a welfare state? Hmm? Why can't we do both? Hmm? Hmm? Why not both? Tell me in the comments below why we can't do both. Anyway, girders, wrenches, and electrical, mechanical engineering. The mouthful research for the first one. Okay, let's finish these ships, and then we'll spam out. We don't have any big ships, do we? We have the coastal defense ships. So it looks like we might have to research a big boaty. Yeah, we will. Ooh. Yep. There's no way around it. We're gonna have to research this. Do you bucks down the game with heavy ships being researched? This is definitely an unusual experience. And I think what we're gonna do is focus on... Oh, we have armored cars at the start of the game. Wow, Sweden, so advanced. Artillery and pump out a few motorized. Okay, it starts. Five speed, let's go. We're gonna abuse the international market by just importing regular guns because they're really accessible on the market where artillery is a little bit harder to get hold of. The first focus unlocks this event and we're going to go with the minor power in opposition which hurts our stability but gains us research but allows us to focus on moving a little bit to the right and this is the old enemy stirs and we need world tension to do this so in the meantime we build up our industry which starts with urbanization promoting urbanization. I want you to be a smart hoi for player and resist the urge to spend political power can you see that current ruling party is democratic or communist they're going fascist but this advisor won't exist when we flip ideologies this one too and this one too so there are other ways of time so don't do that one day older one day wiser okay another election here we're gonna go with the farmers pie just because it gives us some more war support why not you are minus 20 war support plus five war support still puts you at zero zero you're not going any higher than that Okay, we're going to need a bit of naval XP, so you know how to get it. Exercise your fleet. Off you go. Defense above all else. So you're choosing between rearming or focusing on your civilian economy. Guys, this is a war game. Why would you be focusing on your economy? Come on. Come on. All right, we've got enough command power now. And we're going to go for the army organization, bro, which is going to give us ticking XP. The names of the focuses for Sweden are the best. Here we go. So privately managed vacation. So America? Mm hmm? Reject salted licorice agreement. God, I can get behind this. Whoever likes licorice, you, you are absolutely sick. What are you thinking? All right, when you get your 30 XP, we could start making our heavy bathtubs. What is a heavy bathtub? Well, there was a strategy once upon a time where you could mix submarines that were basically super cheap and that would give you naval supremacy to do naval invasions. Now that is a lot more difficult to do, so you do the armored bathtub. And what it basically is, is the cheapest possible battleship, but it has high amounts of manpower, which is, allows you to project as much naval suppression as possible. I'm going to go with this boy, a battle line ship builders, because it gives plus five production. Yes. Two rows of those and make one more of those. There you go. Done. And this is where we work towards economic deregulation. The welfare state has been demolished. Welcome to the military industrial complex. Now we are America. If you've not already gathered, I'll be making lots of America jokes throughout this video. Tell me in the comments how angry you are. It is time. The old enemy stirs. After a bloody civil war and a decade of massive industrialization, the Soviet Union is looking to reassert control 
over the territory of the old Russian Empire and beyond. If we wish to avoid becoming trapped in the Soviet Union's severe of influence, we need to act quickly and prepare for war. And with that, we can go partial mob as well. So just over a year, and we've got a fully industrialized, well, militarily industrialized Sweden. The military interest group is very, very happy. Prevent a red dictatorship. The social democrats are nothing more than a Trojan horse for the communists. <sighs> the enemy within. So we're going to train a bunch of horse divisions here. The way you used to win against Norway, and to a certain degree Denmark too, is you just make lots of troops and cover the front line and just walk around them. Let's see if that still works. At the same time, let's buy some guns off the market. And this is so convenient. I love the market. Ugh. Guns just add water. And you can buy multiple guns from the same faction. Oh, life is so easy. When Paradox realized that monarchist paths were popular, they were like, yes, every expansion will have one. But not today. Revoke the anti-militia laws. So Sweden has this. Sweden risks a strike if stability is below 65% it is and we are having a pending strike which has dramatic consequences my advice ride the storm the big 180 unite the national socialist movement and we get to pick a leader so we're either going to go for the stability or we're going to go for the recruitable pop wow that's strong a hundred percent that is the equivalent of an almost almost limited conscription for free can't say no to that and i'm also going to go for the path that probably no one's going to go for either i'm going to side with the germans and go with a delegation to berlin now every path of fascism has this do you either side with the germans or do you do your own little fascist own path and look at the focuses here they're a lot more interesting than these ones but i'll just do this one do you know what because i don't think anyone else is going to do this today we do something a little bit different technically we're still democratic i thought that was going to change my ideology and say hello to the strikes country-wide strikes Lose construction, output, factory output, production efficiency growth, and political power. You know what? That's not actually that bad. You know what? I'll just ride the storm on that one. And the strikes just ended. Well, that was brief, but they're building up again. I have no idea what's going on. Ooh, and the advantage of the German path for Sweden is you get rid of the hunger fuds thing immediately. Ah, so boom. No more unrest. And I instantly become a puppet of Germany, and I instantly enter a civil war. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that's spicy. All right, lads, off we go. And this is why we read the tooltips, boys, because there's things that may happen that can change the outcome of your game. We might be able to just wrap around the back here. But we're actually in the faction, so we could actually bring them into the war if we wanted to. Do we want to do that, though? Mm, probably not. Maybe we could just walk around the front line. The classic civil war strategy. Convert the divisions to the better division. Make it so it's just artillery, 10 width artillery. And once again, the AI is leaving gaps in the front line. I have no problem with that. Just march forward, boys. Crash and burn. Oh, and Lenley's from Germany. Nice. So I've accidentally done the exploit here for Civil Wars, where you give them a really bad division before the war. And then when the war starts, they have to deal with this really awful division. And I've converted to one that's clearly superior. It comes down to stats. That's just a win-win situation, I guess. The Battle of Malmo. It's done. It feels strange taking land from Sweden when I am Sweden and taking their navy. Okay, so here we go. This is the path where I become a puppet of Germany. The Reich's Protectorate of Sweden. So this is a familiar path you get with Hoi 4 focus trees. Is that you sacrifice yourself to the devil and you've got an option to either try and slowly break away or become more integrated with your puppet to gain some like pretty OP bonuses. Oh, this is interesting. Embrace Germanic culture. 12% research bonus? What? Okay, we're going to do the path that, once again, I think no one's going to do. We're going to integrate more with Germany. So speaking of research, we have this guy too that gains plus 6% research too. We have the potential here as Sweden to stack some pretty insane research bonuses. Oh, do I do it? Do I just stack as high as I can go? Next up, integrate the military with Germany's, which levels up all my guys by giving them extra attack and loads of XP, and you also get a new general. We've got the option of promote Nordic identity, which gains you a bunch of claims and autonomy and stability, more support, or embrace Germanic culture, which gives an insane 12% research. You know what? I'm going to do it. Welcome to the most wonkiest game possible of Sweden. I guarantee you no content creator has done this run. Let's stack that research bonus. Another 4%. Free trade for extra research? Yeah, why not? What we're at right now? 30%. We can go higher. Feedback gaming, AA tank? I don't mind if I do. Machine guns too? Yes. 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 Pro tip. If you auto upgrade your tank by ticking this, 
it will auto grade these ones with ones to twos if you research them which will give you the new variant for free without spending army xp which in the long run is going to game you like 20 30 xp over a game period for one model of a tank it will, will save you quite a lot for the long run win-win so i'm making armored trains now so i'm just going to sell all the old civilian trains good idea no and then we'll go for this guy six percent research we've embraced germanic culture which apparently focuses on research apparently recognize our finnish claims to finland i guess finland we get to declare war on finland immediately Ooh. is anyone guaranteeing finland no oh this will be a really early winter war <sighs> Ooh, so naval invasion right on top of Helsinki. Is that a good idea? Yeah, let's do it. Yep, let's do it. Naval invasion of the south, push through the north, strike force to do an instant naval invasion, and recognize our Finnish claims. So we've got access to the storm trooper. We're gonna make 16 of these, and they're kind of militia. These like the SS, but the Swedish SS, the SSS. Uh, no, no. Recognize Finnish claims. Naval invasion just about to commence. Ready, declare. Do we declare straight away? We don't have the ability to declare because we're a subject. Paradox. Seriously? Okay. We have the option to do new world order, which breaks us free immediately. 100 manpower? What? 600 trucks? We gained the tiger tank in 1939? Um... I'll give it one thing, guys. This focus tree is so different. I've never played anything like this before. Norway wants to buy a Swedish tank. Not right now, Norway. Says so we gain an event. The Sphere Reich rebels. Okay, where's the event? Oh, we have broken free though. Oh, okay. I guess the event happened, but I just didn't see it. All right, declare war on Finland. Oh, and we can't execute our naval invasion because we don't have enough convoys. Man, I haven't really thought of much here at all, have I? And there are no convoys on the market to buy? Are you all right, Britain, France. USA, clearly you've got excess convoys. You've got to have excess convoys. And Germany has declared war on me. Well. So the event gave me this. So it's definitely a Tiger tank. I click on it and I see captured Tiger variant. That doesn't look like a Tiger tank at all. Holy. That's a big boy. A 42 width monster. Well, there's no doubt about it. That's pretty OP. It's given me a 40 width monster division. Oh, and this is the tank. This has never been a tiger tank. What, what is this? What is this? Strangely enough, even though I've left Germany, I still have this German general here, the one with the hat. And I also have Germanification. I love Germany and they're also at war with me. A very mixed, confused relationship here, lads. Yeah, we built a port and we're just trying our best to get a little bit of a uh, little bit of supply. Not really much new here, lads. Supply issues in Finland, classic, right? This is not the path I wanted to go down here, but this is where we've ended up. Neutral to Axis, to neutral to Allies. The ultimate cook path. So when you need convoys, you need convoys to put on the back of your convoys. Am I understanding this correctly? Buy convoys, max out. It's telling me unable to complete because of lack of civilian factories. What? Oh no, it's working now. 17th of February, we will gain 90 convoys in one month. Actually, now think about it. That level of production transfer is absolutely insane. Anyway, naval invasion. Can we do it now? Yes, we can. We've got the convoys. We have the power. Land, land, land around the outside. You wanted to go to Helsinki, okay? We're here. Ah, we got him. Nice. Oh, and uh, the Australians are helping us out. The Gallipi in inning. The Gallipi inning. Inning. Oh, there's no joke there. <laughs> The Australians can Gallipoli anywhere. Ooh, I got to use my tank now. This is my favorite timeline, guys, where the, the Swedish panzer tanks invaded Norway. And not going to lie, the damage they do is pretty insane. Well, looks like we have to deploy the stormtroopers because I'm having a really hard time holding this front line. One Tiger tank is just not enough. I think Germany is preoccupied in Europe at the moment. Maybe building up a Barbarossa so I get an opportunity to make a push. I love it when the AI leaves gaps in the front line. It is rare these days, but when they do do that, that makes me very happy. And pop goes the Finland. You know that I love manpower, right? So every game, manpower, no-brainer, mass assault, and mass mobilization till you get a human wave. That 5% needs nerf, and it's just too strong. Every time I want to go for it. Minor nations just benefit way too much from it. I cannot say no. 
Norway too has capitulated. I didn't realize that, that the rebel Norway could capitulate. It wouldn't be a Hoi 4 game if there wasn't multiple of one nation, right? Like a tank is seeing action. And that's the only time that this army actually makes any pushes because the rest of it is just crappy militia. So German Panzer versus Swedish Tiger. This is the best timeline. Who will win? Duke it out, boys. Oh, and Rommel is leading the Panzer Division and getting absolutely demolished. I'm piercing them. They can't pierce me. Absolutely shrekt. Swedish tanks superior to German tanks, clearly. And now you have no supply. Not only when you're in a situation where you're low on guns, it's like, oh, this is a very slow roll to the very end of the game where you slowly get defeated. But the advantage now is that I can just be like, you know what? I feel like a top up of guns, you know? So anyone going to give me guns? Yeah, I will. Okay, I'll accept. We've got these Yugoslavian guns. We have regular bayonets, four different kinds, grenade versions, and flashbang versions. Okay, we're getting bored of this pocket now. Please just close it. One thing that's a bit of a disappointment about this expansion is kind of all the nations play very similar. You kind of lack military production and you you always lack manpower as well. So kind of play style is very similar for every single one of the Scandinavian nations. What's the status? German push into Ukraine and Belarus. Soviet push into the Balkans. What do these borders remind you of? 1444, EU4. Finland returned to a rightful colony where it belongs. Hey, I'm a YouTuber, okay? So I like it when something weird happens in a game. Because, hey, it gives me something to talk about. Like, look at the Soviet Union invasion of Danzig. Amazing, right? No, it's not really that interesting. But what is interesting is this. You know the medals, the distinctions, the promotions, the citations. We have a really interesting one here called Order of the Brave. And it gives 10% reconnaissance, which is um, kind of crap. But then it also gives armor. Now, I want you to imagine this in your mind. So they put a medal on an armor division. Okay, you basically say, well done. You have a citation for taking, I don't know, Moscow or whatever. Or Helsinki, blah, blah, blah. And somehow this gives more armor to the tank division. Now you can understand the attack and organization and breakthrough and stuff. You can like, almost like the division working harder, but how do you explain the armor? Guys, comment below. I want you to t visualize to me what it looks like and how a division gains more armor just by solely having a medal. Hmm. Classic exploit trick, boys. What you do is you train a bunch of divisions that you don't actually want. Just train them, train them, train some more. Oh, that's right. Lots of divisions. So many divisions. And look at this. Logistics. Massive deficit. So much red. So much red. And look what we've done here. We've baited loads and loads of lend -lease. So basically the international market, but free. Yeah. South Africa, you would like to lend lease with some equipment? I would love that. And I'll be honest with you, the Allies are the best nation to lend lease off because one, they did it historically. And two, they've got way more industrial output. It is a big nerf to the Axis. But they're the bad guys, right? So we can't feel bad for them. Cheesy Strategies 101. But you get to declare war on Denmark just straight away. And because they're a puppet of Germany and that's like a way around the puppet mechanics, so you can just declare war and then steamroll Denmark. Will it be enough firepower? I think it might be. Boom. It seems strange to me that the Danish government kind of worked with the allies historically, but you can declare war on them as if they're a member of the Axis. Oh, they are a member of the Axis. This is meant to be the historical path, by the way. Hmm. Sweden capitulated Denmark, the revenge of the personal union. Those unions were meant to be broken. Marriage eventually leads to divorce. This kind of divorce is blitzkrieg. Now I've gotten over the big river. It's just an open goal right now. And we're still baiting land lease as well. Do we even need that much land lease anymore? No, we don't. So now you cancel it. You get all your manpower back. But then look at the equipment we've got. We've just gained 17,000 guns just because we baited the system. <laughs> got them, boys. And we're going to take Berlin as well. Just walk into Berlin. Just walk straight in. You know, there's nobody there. Boom. The fall of Berlin. Go on. Pop up. Pop up. Where is it? No, not Slovakia. No, not Hungarian rejects demands. Where's the farm of Berlin? In my imagination, has that event been removed from the game? Stealing Denmark's thunder, eh? That's a plan to victory. Goes. This is the Reich. This is an interesting uh, Italian civil war. We have the allies to the south. Uh, we have the axis to the north. Well, the new green axis. And then we have like a buffer state of the Soviet Union wedged between the both of them. Now look at this peace conference, okay? Look really, really closely. Hmm. Some interesting things going on here. Oh, I love Oslo. Okay, maybe I'll take the claims the Soviet Union want. That makes sense, right? Uh, okay, maybe I'll take a chunk out of Denmark as well. Uh, Schleswig? Holstein? Technically Swedish clay, right? No? 
No. North of Germany. Okay, we're getting a bit historical now. Oh, the history. I can feel the history. The Soviets adamantly want that territory. They adamantly want Karelia as well. I wonder why. I think they've got a discount on it because it's a claim of those. So we're probably going to be fighting for this for quite a while. The AI never takes the ships, do they? Ever. I feel like if you run out of points, you never get the option to grab it. Well, this was a, a video where I was meant to be siding with the Axis. But I accidentally sided with the Allies. And I uh, restored almost s former Swedish Empire. No, this is actually the Swedish Empire. I guess I'd need Estonia as well, wouldn't I? And I need Norway under a personal union. But hey, come on. That's quite nice. That's pretty close. And it's not too bad to say that I barely made any civilian factors for the entirety of the game. We have the perfect ratio here of 36 mils and 36 civilian factories. This is a militarized Sweden. If you want a copy of Sphere Reich, did I say that right? Then subscribe to this video and show your appreciation for that really old game. But most of you probably weren't even born when they released it. And if you like tacos, particularly fish tacos, the crispy ones, why don't you think about liking this video? And if you don't like it, why don't you comment and tell me why you don't like fish tacos? I'm going to go lie down now. Bye-bye. You've watched it. You can't unwatch it. And keep watching it. This is the next video. Give this one a click. This one.